Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. You know, folks, I love New York because it is not Washington, D.C. <laughs> it's bad down there. It's bad down It's like the Battle of Winterfell down there. <laughs> oh. This morning, Donald Trump asserted executive privilege over the Mueller report. Executive privilege, of course, is actually Trump's favorite privilege. <laughs> right after a uh, white male and Mar-a-Lago handicapped bathroom. <laughs> I like some room to spread out in there because God only knows what's about to happen. This, this cannon is loaded and the barrel is not rifled. Goodness. Trump's privilege claim covers not only the Mueller report, but the underlying evidence that House Democrats are seeking. This report is a complete and total exoneration, and if anyone wants to read it, I will cut a bitch. <laughs> No surprise. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Right. I'm paraphrasing there. Different words. No surprise. Democrats are not pleased, especially House Judiciary Chairman and man whose pudding was supposed to be here by now, <laughs> Jerry Nadler. Uh, he wants to make himself a king, and Congress cannot permit that. He wants to be a monarch. We, we rebelled against George III for that. We're not going to take it now. Technically, we rebelled against George III because he didn't want to pay taxes which makes Donald Trump the most patriotic American who has ever lived. As far as we know. As far as we know. Trump made the executive privilege claim to protect Attorney General and man saying, Mr. Bunny doesn't think there's obstruction either. <laughs> William Barr. You see, Barr has refused to obey a congressional subpoena for the Mueller report and the underlying evidence. So today, the Judiciary Committee voted to hold Barr in contempt of Congress. It's just, yes. Big news. Pretty big. Yes. It's big, it's big turning point. Though, it, I mean, really, it's just a formality, because as soon as you start working for Trump, you're held in contempt by just about everybody. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, tell the prison guards not to cavity search Barr yet because the Justice Department can decline to charge an official who defies a subpoena at the president's direction. Yes, the Justice Department can decline. The same Justice Department that is run by Bill Barr. <clears throat> After a careful consideration, I am issuing a four-page memorandum asserting that you can kiss my big Billy Barr butt. <laughs> now, Trump wants Congress to move on from the Russia story, but that ain't happening. Because today, the Senate Intelligence Committee subpoenaed Donald Trump Jr. over Russia matters. Uh huh. And I think over Russia matters, and I think what matters is that Russia is not over. <laughs> this is a really big deal because, unlike over in the House, the Senate is run by Republicans which means that this battle comes down to a Republican committee chair pitted against the Republican president's eldest son. Donald Trump might have to choose between the Republican Party and his own family, two things he was not a member of until 2016. <laughs> this is... I don't think so. I don't, I don't really... Wow. I don't want to get mixed up. This is a big deal for a lot of reasons, one of which is that this is the first congressional subpoena that we know about of one of President Trump's children. Also, the first of President Trump's children that we know about. <laughs> we'll... We'll have... We will have more. We will have more on this tomorrow unless Don Jr. takes a powder. Now... <laughs> there's more juicy news, folks, because the New York Times got Trump's taxes <laughs> from 19... What is it? 85? It's from the taxes it's from 1985 to 94. It's not exactly what you wanted. It's spending Christmas stranded at the Tampa airport. You know, <laughs> not great, but still Christmas. <laughs> now, the Times dove into 10 years' worth of Trump's tax return information, and the biggest takeaway is that over those 10 years, Trump reported $1.17 billion in losses. That is $2 billion in today's money. Okay? That is more than the GDP of Gambia. Or as Trump might put it, I'm a whole country now. <laughs> Keep in... He might, he might say that.
Didn't say he would. Keep in mind, 85 to 94 was Trump's prime. Those were his, were his salad days, minus the salad. <laughs> Trump was everywhere back then, pushing his carefully crafted billionaire image. Just look at the article's lead photo. We finally found the Central Park Dracula. <laughs> I want to suck, and I do. <laughs> Everything we thought we knew. Thank you. Thank you. It's one of the characters, one of my characters. Everything we thought we knew about Trump back then is a lie. Remember his cameo as the fancy rich guy in Home Alone 2? Now we know when he recorded that, he was so broke he had to borrow money from the pigeon lady. <laughs> Trump fired back at the Times this morning, tweeting, Real estate developers in the 1980s and 90s, more than 30 years ago, were entitled to a massive write-offs and depreciation, which would, if one was actively building, show losses and tax losses in almost all cases. Much was non-monetary, sometimes considered tax shelter. Dot 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 dot. You would get it by building or even buying. You always wanted to show losses for tax purposes. Almost all real estate developers did, and often renegotiate with banks. It was sport. Additionally, the very old information put out is a highly inaccurate fake news hit job. So. His argument is what he did was totally normal, and also, he didn't do it. <laughs> Pick a lane, Mr. President. Look, officer, I could not have committed the murder. I was in my apartment all night. Plus, back then, everyone was murdering. It was sport. <laughs> Trump's tax documents, uh, they paint a picture of a man always living above his means. For instance, in 1987, the president spent $29 million on a 282-foot yacht, which he ultimately agreed to turn over to his lenders. Oh, really? You're gonna take away my boat with what? A bigger boat? <laughs> really? Oh, I'd like to see that. That would be... <laughs> of course, it's hard to put a positive spin on revelations like that, unless you're a Fox and friend. So I think it's interesting to read this article. It's interesting right. to see that he had a $29 million boat or that he had this. That's a big boat. That's the spin. <laughs> That's the spin. Big boat. Interesting. Folks, this is a complicated story, so let's take out all the verbs. Big boat, fire bad, Trump good. <laughs> then, <laughs> big boat. <laughs> then they served the next course of the breakfast propaganda. If anything, you read this and you're like, wow, it's pretty impressive, all the things that he's done in his life. It's beyond but, what most of us could ever achieve. I, I don't know. That's the way he lived. The reason why we all knew Donald Trump's name is for 30 years, that's what he did. He bought towers, hotels, golf courses. He did it in other countries. When, what do people not understand about these a little bit different than most people? Yes. We've noticed he's a little different. If he were most people, he'd either be in jail right now or napping on the couch while his children quietly discuss the next steps. 